Today I wanted to talk about some conditioning for peekaboo martial boxing, specifically with the mace or the mace bell. Some sort of heavy club swinging has been part of conditioning for martial arts for beginning of time practically. You look back at images of Hercules. Hercules was always shown with a big wooden club because that big heavy club was a symbol of strength. Hercules was the strong man. As you go through time, you saw leaders with their scepter, which was a rod with a ball on the end, and that originally symbolized a heavy club, a mace. Indian and Pakistani wrestlers probably got passed on from the Greeks, from Greek pancreation. They did a form of wrestling, and their main port conditioning was swinging heavy clubs, which they called agata. That's the traditional term, agata, and it was usually a, a chunk of rock on the end of a long wooden pole or log or concrete on the end of a pole or a very large chunk of wood with a narrower handle on it and they swung this thing for strength and conditioning so it's great if you're into any kind of weapons martial arts at all i love it it's like holding a weapon swinging a sword or something it's, it's manly it's cool i like it i never like lifting weights you can tell by looking at me i have never been and am not a weightlifter but I like swinging the clubs, okay? Today we're gonna to talk about the mace bell specifically, but in the future we may talk about the club bells, which is a one-handed version, smaller, that you can swing in a single hand, okay? So, they come in various weights. This is a 10 pound, 10 pound, this one's 15. So you can see it's like an iron cannonball on the end of a long rod. And what makes this unique you look and you say 10 or 15 pounds that doesn't sound like much but it's a leverage game you've got that 10 pounds way out at the end of this rod as you're swinging it and it makes it feel like it's five times heavier easily and that's where the, the benefit of this comes in so by swinging this thing you're using leverage to control the momentum at that weight at the end of a lever arm you want to talk about the physics and when you swing it You've got to use your core and your whole body to stabilize this thing and control it. It's not like standing there and just curling a weight or using a weight machine. It involves your whole body, even though some exercises are going to zoom in on certain things. I started with the 10 pound first and worked up and I've been using the 15 pound lately and they go even heavier and longer from there as far as mace belts go. But if you're about my size, average build, you'd start with a 10 pound and get good at the technique and start building some conditioning before you move up to the 15. And I'm gonna show you a drill called the 360. And in the 360, they generally recommend, say you're ready to go from up in weight, when you can do 100 360s nonstop with the weight you're at. Then you can talk about going up to a higher weight. And you'll see what I'm talking about in a minute. Okay, but this is very nice and you can tell I don't need a whole room full of weights. I don't even need a bench. All I need is some place with enough room to swing this sucker overhead. And I can do all kinds of exercises and get a total body workout, which I think is very germane and pertinent to martial arts. And that's why I do it. I'm not trying to build big build muscles. I'm not gonna compete in weightlifting. I do it for health and to make my martial arts better. And from a health standpoint, I can say since I've been swinging this, these things, it's increased my core strength and it has pretty much Chronic low back pain, chronic low mild back pain has gone away. Even helps with chronic neck pain because I'm toning the muscles of my neck. So, that's what we're going to talk about next. I'm going to put the big one out of the way and just swing the, lot, the smaller one now just so I can maintain some good technique. But again, this is the one I work out with. And this one, even at 10 pounds, is still a good workout. Don't, don't think this is a pushover. So some of you have done kettlebells and you know that the kind of the core basic exercise I usually teach with kettlebells is the kettlebell swing and you do these over and over and that's kind of your baseline. Well the baseline for the mace or the gata is the 360. 360 is what the mace bell guys call it, the club bell guys call it a double arm shield cast just, just for grins. Okay? So you start with this thing. now. I can hold it clear at the end and it's going to be harder. If I was starting with a heavy weight and I didn't have a smaller weight to transition from, I'd hold it here and that makes it 
makes it easier to swing. I just gotta make sure I don't smack myself with the end. But typically you're gonna hold it down here. So the 360s, I've got a nice stance. I'm holding it right in front. See, I've got it balanced so it's not going either way. And then my top hand is my right hand, so I'm gonna to go to my left. And I just let the, the weight start to tip. I'll then swing behind my back like this. And then I bring it across and catch it in front. So you see there's a pause right here. So when I get it going, it looks like this. Okay, and you can tell it's going to work your shoulders, it's going to work your lats, it just works your upper body in general. Okay, but that's the, the 360 or the double arm shield cast. Okay, this next exercise is similar to the last one. I usually start my routine with the first exercise, the one I just showed you, and then I end my routine with this exercise, but I'm putting them side to side so you can do a comparison. And this one, is called the, the Gama Cast or Gamma Cast. Ga, the great Gama was this Indian wrestler of fame from back in history, and what this was supposedly his primary exercise, so people call it the Gata Cast or the 10 and 2. Mace Bell guys say the 360 and the 10 and 2. The Club Bell guys will say double arm shield cast and the Gata Cast. This depends on who you're listening to. So, this one we start similarly. But now what I'm gonna do, it's not a full swing and it doesn't really pause in the center. This time I'm gonna go from side to side. I'm gonna go from the 10 o'clock position to the two o'clock position, all right? So it circles around and then I catch it here. And then I, there's not much of a pause because it's kind of a dynamic thing. And then as the weight starts to shift, I bring it back to this side and then this side. And it's relatively easy with these lighter mace bells. You can imagine if I was doing this with a 20 pound mace bell, that would be really catch and hold, and catch and hold, and catch and hold. Even with a 15 pound, it's, it's a good workout. And this works the lats a little more directly than the last exercise did. But this is the 10 and two. And see, I bring it in to myself. I'm not holding it out here. And then I bring my arms all the way back, almost going into extension. That club bell, the mace bell's hanging straight down. That's important. So I bring it up. Sometimes the guys will have the really long ones, the really heavy ones, and they'll lever it across their shoulder like this. And they're really doing the heavy weight. But the good form is starting from one side, go to the other. With the previous exercise and with this exercise both, you do a set with one hand on top, and then I take a break, and then I switch it, and I do a set with the other hand on top, all right? And that's, and then those two together, where you've worked both sides, one with the right hand on top, one with the left hand on top, and that's the whole exercise. So that's the, the 10 and two. Okay, this next series of exercises is to work the abs and the core. Just like I'm not big into lifting weights, I hate doing stomach crunches and sit-ups. But this will really work your core and your abdomen, and it's great for martial boxing, for boxing in general. So, because so much of it depends on core strength when you're moving around, more so than arm strength when you're trying to generate power in a punch. So, this first exercise is to, is to help develop the, the hips and the abs when you're doing the pivot. You saw my previous video talking about how the pivot is the basic engine behind peekaboo martial boxing. This, this drill is essential because you're strengthening and developing that pivot. So what you do is you take your mace bell. I've got a nice wide stance. I'm holding it out here and I'm going to turn to the side and turn back. And see, I'm, I'm 
swinging this thing and I'm catching it right here at the end and I'm swinging back this way and catching it on this side. So the important thing here, my left hand draws in, I swing around, and then my left hand extends out and I come this way. And I just go back and forth. Okay. And that's the pivot. Okay, the second one for the ab and core strength. And again, you can imagine where does this come into our boxing? Our pivot. Pivot. All those pivots get better when you develop that strength. Now, this next one I call the sledgehammer. And it's because it's like swinging a sledgehammer. And it's related to where you've probably seen guys working a sledgehammer and hit a tire, boom, and letting it bounce off. When we're not hitting anything, it's a lot more controlled. But I'm going to take this, holding it here, I put my left foot forward, the mace fell over my right shoulder, my arm's all the way up, and I'm going to turn like I'm hammering with a sledgehammer. And then I bring it back up, yeah. Boom. And the important thing here is, as I'm coming up, get full extension with my left hand, reaching way up here, so the club belt, or the mace is directly behind me. And I'm bringing it over and I'm catching it and tightening up my ab as I do so. Important to really squeeze down on the abs. Come back. And notice I'm coming all the way to the outside of my lead leg so I can follow through. Okay, that's the sledgehammer. You can imagine this motion, building my abs for this motion going over. I mean, it's obvious if you're doing any kind of grappling, a throw, throwing somebody over. But even from a boxing standpoint, doing my overhead, overhand punch, or just moving in, all kinds of motions that involve dropping the shoulder forward and tightening my abs, this exercise is for. The third one in this series, it's called the Grave Digger. A lot of these exercises, if you do a search on YouTube, you're gonna find people probably better than me demonstrating them, and some of them I've kinda of come up with myself. But do a YouTube search if this interests you, you'll find all kinds of stuff on the mace belt. The Grave Digger is a classic exercise, and the idea here is it's almost like the opposite of the sledgehammer that we just did. So instead of standing here and going down, I'm gonna stand here come up. Now with this one it's important that my mace is behind my rear leg and then when I come forward my right hand extends all the way up and the mace is straight down behind me again. All right? So now this is the power stroke ah, and this is the recovery. So it's like I'm digging a hole and it's the grave digger because it's like I'm down in the grave I'm digging and I'm throwing the dirt behind me. I'm not throwing it forward, I'm throwing it behind me, and hence Grave Digger. Okay, and that one, again, should be obvious. It's that lifting motion now. So, uppercut, my body hook. I'm in a clinch fighting situation, just being able to lift the guy across. You know, that kind of strength comes from this exercise. Then, the last one in my ab series, you remember, you remember from our peekaboo martial boxing core technique, is that slip. 
So we take the mace bell, grab hold of it this way, get in our stance, and I'm going to do the slip motion side to side. And remember, it comes from the hips. I'm not just doing this. I'm throwing my hips left. I throw my hips right. And I work it this way. And this is as much a hip exercise as it is a core ab exercise. And of course, like I said, for each of those, I would switch it around and do the other side for it to be a complete set. Okay? And that's my core ab exercises with the mace. Okay, the next two exercises are for the arms, for the curling motion. So, this time I take my, my mace bell. I'm going to stand with my left foot forward, my right foot back, and my this is the left hand is the pivot and it goes near my waist near the center of my body and so what I do is I start back here and I curl this up and catch it at my shoulder like so boom boom so you can see now I'm swinging this mace bell out to the side in an arc and catching it catching it here and with a heavy mace bell bringing it back my leg kind of decelerates it but I'm not pushing it forward with my leg I'm catching it with my leg and I'm curling with my arm. Face this way. And then of course, switch and do the, do the other side. That switch is a drill into on its a drill of its own for, for developing the, the, the arms and just controlling the mace. And the switch is, it's like my hands cross in the center to here. So I catch it down here, boom. Then I'm doing a biceps curl when I switch. So that's the arm exercises, and you're you're probably well, again obvious doing that curl is directly related to an uppercut or a body a body shot. Okay? You're probably thinking, well, what about basic punching motion? There's not I don't know of any good exercises where you're punching forward with the mace bell. I mean, you can you can do stuff like this, but to me that's not too satisfying. I still think some form of push-up is still the best thing for developing that extension motion. Okay? Now, we haven't done much for the legs yet, and there's a lot of exercises you can do for the legs, but a basic one I like to do is called the barbarian squat, and it's another classic exercise with the mace. In a barbarian squat, you get in a nice, good square squat position, you get this thing here, all right, and then I'm going to extend all the way back so that again that mace bell is hanging straight down behind me and then I bring it forward as I squat and I touch my elbows to my knees right and I come back up you see by holding it in this square position the mace bell is pretty balanced I can control the weight. Even if it was a heavy weight, you can control it from here. And then I set it in motion. And you can see the mace bell kind of makes you have good form. People that squat heavy weights sometimes hurt their backs because they don't keep that good form, the arch going down. And I have to balance the mace. I can't let it tip forward or I'm gonna fall. So in the process of balancing the mace, I keep pretty good form in my squat. Okay. 
So that's the barbarian squat. So the routine I do now, in case you wonder, well, what do I do with all this? I start with the 360s. I do 70 on one side. I switch hands. I do 70 on the other side. Okay? And then I go to my ab exercises. So I'll do pivots where you count one, two, three. I'll do 30 in one direction, switch hands, and do 30 in the other direction. And then I'll do the sledgehammers. Or I'll do 30 one way and switch and do 30 the other way. And then I'll do the grave digger where I'll do 30 on one side and then switch and do 30 on the other side. And then I'll do my slips. I'll do counting one, two, three. I'll do 30 on one side, switch, do 30 on the other side. And then I get to my arms, where I'll come here, and this I could usually do about 40, 45, depending on how many, how much weight you've got, and then switch, and do the other side. Sometimes I'll do one side, and then I'll do this transition switch about 20 times, and end on this side, and then do another set on this side. Okay? And then I'll do my barbarian squats. I'll do a set of 40, and rest for a second, recover, then do another set of 40, and then I'll end my routine with the 10 and two. I'll do 60 on one side, and I'll switch and put my other hand up, and do 60 going the other direction. And that's a pretty good whole body exercise routine that hits a lot of things. Now, I'm no expert with the mace bell, the guys that are really good will come up with routines where they'll do all these fancy stuff. They transition from one thing to the other thing, and it's almost a rhythmic gymnastics routine or a martial arts kata. They just start stringing these exercises together instead of doing multiple reps of one thing. And it's kind of cool. Maybe that'll come later. But that's my basic mace conditioning for boxing.